Hello. So let's talk about bookkeeping business income discussion. So I want to talk today about the misunderstandings most people have about starting a bookkeeping business. So number one, some today we're just going to go over some common misunderstandings that cause people to actually stay stuck a lot longer than what they do. It, the reason why it causes you to be stuck is because either it causes you to think that you are working more effectively than what you actually are and slash or it causes you to be um discouraged a little bit early because because your expectation was different than what the reality of the situation actually was so i want to make sure that you feel like really good and that you're able to stay as persistent as possible um, i want to just really clarify this stuff today also if you want some help growing your business like maybe in china very but it's just not quite going the way that you want the way you hope the way you plan go ahead and click the link inside the description either above below the video to book the call with myself to see if i can help you inside our program so let's go my lip is like feeling for some reason i don't know so number one, misunderstanding number one is immediate high income. So, so the reality is it does take a little bit of time to build. So what happens is a lot of people think that when they're starting out that they're going to open their business, they're just going to get a lot of people just come like rushing at them. Like it's going to be like a, a rush of people. Give me one sentence. Hey, so back to what we were saying. I had to go get a drink of water. I was super dehydrated for a second. Um, so the reality is it's not going to happen overnight. Generally, what, what happens with the student star mentorship program, like in this, I could be leading to something like the misunderstanding. It's not that the students are getting 20, 30, 40 clients in like the first 60 days. It's more like they get like four to five clients that are paying them a high amount of money. And that's how they get to like six thousand, eight thousand dollars in sixty days, right? So it's like it's not that you're getting this giant rush of, of influx of business. It's just you don't drop the opportunities that come to you, right? So it's like a smaller volume of of consultation calls, but they're higher quality. So you don't have to kind of do as much work as other person. I tell a lot of people that like are thinking about joining our programs, like you're working like five times five any sometimes like 10 times harder than the other students in our mentorship program are. Um, it's just, since you don't know what is like the things to do versus like, what is the thing to kind of avoid? You're kind of, you have to do that. You know what I mean? But it's like, it doesn't take that much if you're focused on long-term growth and if you're focused on building your business the right way. Because it's not just about getting more clients. It's about really driving up the income in the beginning. When you're at like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month, okay, cool. Then you can start thinking about like going after more clients to create diversification. But if you're like zero to about twelve k per month, it's really about getting a small number of clients that pay you a high amount of money because we need to leave our job as quickly as possible. And if you have a bunch of small clients, here's one thing no one really thinks about. So for a lot of the small clients, even though the work might take an hour a month, if you have to go and actually do meetings with them, so that means like maybe they want to like an update or they want to like talk to you for whatever reason, right? So maybe they just like you. That hour a day or hour per week or, or two hours per month can add up. So now you're it only took you one hour to do the work, but now you're meeting bi-weekly. So that's three hours per month. If you get about 10 clients like that, that's only 30 hours per month. If 30 hours per month, and let's say that you're getting, what is that, $3,000 for 30 hours. So that's that's not that great, you know? And what is that? 3000 per month divided by 30. Well, that's if you get a $100, $150 per month client. So we'll say 150 times, we'll say about um, 10 of them. It's about $1,500 divided by 30 hours worth of just doing it. It means you're getting paid about $50 per hour, which is not bad. But we really want to kind of get that close to like 100 to like 150 per hour. But right? if you can get about $150 per hour due to like your flat rate, that's really a, a good sweet spot to kind of be in. And, and again, it's not even that like it's just that much work to the, the $150 a month clients. But it's like if you can work like quarter of the time and do like less face time and like at the end of the day, you're actually able to go and like make more, then it's good. We're we'll responsible the same message. I don't know. just something else. Let's see. Let's see. Don't think I do harder. Sorry, my virtual assistant just reached out to me and asked me a question. Cool. And that's why it's important to be patient and persistent when growing this thing. Because it's not going to be overnight, but it will be worth it when you get it to go and like make it work. Number two, misunderstanding number two is no need for marketing. Okay, so some people... <laughs> Some people think like they're going to start their business and like, you know, if you build it, they will come. Like they think that if you build a website, the people are going to come to it. And it's like <laughs> kind of, but not really in the speed with which you think they will. And it's not going to cause them to buy from you the way you think you will. 
So whenever you do like a platform, like, like maybe we'll say like you get like a pro advisor or you do um, Google My Business or even like just, just have a website, it's called search engine optimization. So a search engine is just some place where people go to kind of like go and get uh, information. So like a directory, you do not start at the top of the directory. You start at the very bottom of the directory and you have to work your way up. So if you're expecting just to kind of put your name on it and like all of a sudden you're like five, 10, 15 clients, it generally does not happen like that. <clears throat> in some cases, if you're in a very obscure area where there's not a lot of competition or you have like really, really, really good credentials, then yes, maybe you can, it can slide up. But for most people, it doesn't work the way you think. I have people in a mentorship program that did like pro advisor before they joined the program and they still have never gotten a lease from the pro advisor um, directory listing. It's very interesting, right? So it's, it's very hit or miss to do something like that. Now, one misconception people might have is like, you see like like my YouTube channel, like, you know, Bryce, um, you know, you built it and they came to you. It's like kind of, I mean, number one, I, I have what, 2000 subscribers. I've been doing this for like three years. <clears throat> but then at the same time, look at how many videos I'm posting. And it doesn't just happen. I'm like building a very strategic way so that my videos actually go out to people and then it comes back and like the, the right set of people watch it, you know? So it's like, it's a very very specific strategy of how I run YouTube to grow it because it what I used to build I had a, a YouTube channel before and no one watched it right so this time around I got coaching on like how to like build YouTube channels I got coaching on like how to title the videos how to do like keyword research how to make the channel attractive how to get one video lead to the next video to the next video so there's, there's a lot of thought behind it but it didn't just it didn't just happen it wasn't just like you know I just kind of like happened it was very strategic the same thing when it comes to like marketing. It's like this stuff doesn't just happen. You need to make sure that you're very, very specific when doing it, right? Because you need to have marketing in a way that doesn't take too much of your time, but also can get you the right size client. See, that's that's the thing that most people struggle with. <laughs> most people struggle with, number one, if they do marketing, their marketing takes either a lot of time and gets no clients, or it doesn't really take that much time but the clients that get kind of are, are very lackluster right so like maybe let's say for example they're, they're going to go on like upwork so on upwork it's like you're going to put out some job proposals and job postings but in a lot of cases it's not necessarily going to be seen right away so you end up just like spending a lot of like time doing it but you're not really getting that much results or if you do start getting the results oftentimes like the clients can nickel and dime you and that's not in all cases if you're good at sales skill at like sales then like it can work out the way that you want it to but for most people that are starting out it's just ineffective to like get them to like you know three thousand five ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars a month right so you generally need to have a more robust strategy that allows you to be able to be the only person the business owner is thinking about working with a lot of different ways to do that um number three so misunderstanding three okay so a lot of people think, and I wrote this title backwards, a lot of people think that you need to have a million years of experience, you need to be able to do every single skill set, and you just need to be able to like just be this master. That's not the case. We we do what's called the minimum viable skill set, right? So that's like the minimum viable to do the actual accounting work, minimum viable pricing, minimal, minimum viable um, marketing, minimum viable sales, minimum viable team. Everything we do is about building a rough draft and then improving on that rough draft over time until you have the final copy. So what happens is a lot of people, I think this kind of comes from like, you know, if you come from a corporate background, you want to have the processes, procedures, and systems down before you do anything. But it's like, I was telling a lady yesterday who um, I was talking to, it's like, she was like, well, I want to do this first. I want to have this. I want to have this. I want to have this. I want to do this. It's like, you know, it's really hard for you to kind of like plan everything out if you've never actually been in the game. Because how you're thinking it's going to happen is not really how it's going to happen in real life. You know, so I would probably, you know, I just take it one step at a time. Um, and like the person wasn't inside our mentorship program yet. So it's like, you know, it, they, they don't really know what they're doing. So I was just giving like a little bit of just like a piece of advice. and just like, yeah, you know, it's okay to be imperfect. Like, it's okay to get your first client before you have your onboarding process down. Like, like literally for my first client, like I would literally was like, I didn't have a contract template. So I had to like go find one on Google and then like go make it like in like five, 10 minutes and scrape it together, send it to them. And I had to like learn how to use like DocuSign. And then I had to go figure out like a payment processor, right? So I, I use like QuickBooks for the for the first one. And then like, it was a mess, but it worked, you know? Same thing with the second client, the third client. So like, it was not perfect by any means, right? But it's like, that's how you had to get in the game. 
it, it, it's all about getting the game. It's not about being perfect. And that kind of goes back to like someone thinking that they need to be a master before they start because they're afraid that people are going to judge them negatively if they don't have everything lined up from the start. And that's not really the case at all. People in a lot of cases are just happy they have someone to like figure this thing out for them. They're not looking to kind of like, they're not looking with like a, a, a fine tooth comb through every aspect of your business to disqualify you. That's the difference. I think people, people kind of feel that, that business owners are trying to disqualify them. But really what it is, is that when you focus on the wrong things, you don't build trust with the person. And now they're trying to figure out why they don't trust you. And that's when the fine tooth comb kind of comes out. That's when they start asking, like, why is your price the way it is? That's when they start asking, like, well, why should I work with you? That's when they start asking, well, where's your website? I haven't seen your website yet. And just because you focus on the wrong things, which causes them to focus on the wrong things. If you just focus on the right things and you just keep things very smooth, very streamlined, and you only talk about the stuff that's necessary, then they're only focused on what's necessary. Like it's it's crazy, you know? It's 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 crazy. Like <clears throat> I never get asked about my website. It's it's very funny. Like in the beginning, kind of, but that's because I didn't know how to like build build confidence with someone. But like once I learned how to do that, like no one asked about a website. Yeah, what's your website? No, we don't have this. Okay, so how do I pay? What's the next steps? How do we get started? Okay, well, here's what we do. And we go like this, 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 right? And again, that's sales skills, right? Because if you notice, it's not about just doing the onboarding, having an onboarding process. It's about having an organized set of steps that you're going to do. So what's next? Okay, so first things first, I'm going to actually send you a proposal. It's going to have everything we've talked about today and just like a little bit of legalese just to make sure that um, everyone's protected. After that, I'm going to give you a link to the first month's payment. It's going to be via QuickBooks, or if I'm using Stripe, it will be via Stripe. Okay. Once you take care of that, we can schedule an onboarding call. We're going to do your onboarding call. We're going to give you everything you need to get plugged in. And we get all the remaining accesses of that date. Does that sound good? They're like, yeah, awesome. And then that's that's all you do for onboarding. Now your onboarding can be automatic. It can be um, it can be manual. I still think that you should do like a, a manual onboarding, like to actually like make the contract. Like it's not like you're getting like 50, 60 clients. If you're getting like 60 clients, okay, I would say something different, but like if you're only getting like one client every two weeks, it's like, what's the point of automating it? Just have everything templated out, right? I think that's a little bit better than like trying to automate your onboarding. Just have it templated out where it's like, okay, so first you have this email that has like a link to like um that like the steps, so one, two, three. Then you go inside of your DocuSign. So I use DocuSign. You can use PandaDoc. There's a million different like document signing kind of websites. I like DocuSign. Okay, so you just, I have like a bunch of templates stored up for like, okay, accounting service one, accounting service two, accounting service three, accounting service four. Now you're like, well, Bryce, well, every single client might have a different set of services. Okay, well, cool. Well, how you get around that is just by having an open text box that lets you type in which services they did. Cool, then you hit send, okay? Then you go into QuickBooks, you just go and create a customer, you go and tell them how much it is, you basically make the invoice, you hit share and send, and then send it to them. Okay, and then when that happens, you send them a follow-up email after they've paid and after they signed the proposal that has what do you need to get access, and then maybe a link to like a calendar that like lets them book a call with you. Unless you don't want to do onboarding calls, which is all good. I do onboarding calls because we, we have like really, really good... Um, we just have really, really organized ways to kind of convey value on the first call with someone so they feel really, really good about, you know, deciding to work with us. I just found that if you have a really good onboarding call, <clears throat> the client retention's a lot stronger. Now, um, you don't have to have one. Like, if you don't like talking to people, you don't really have to have one. You could even make a video of, like, you going through, like, what are all the most important parts. I also like doing an onboarding call, just in case, like, a misconception of something they need to give me, and I can just have them share their screen or control their screen and then give access to myself. So it just kind of depends on what your style is. I just kind of like that. So I have basically, like, a four-step onboarding process. Cool. And that's all you really need. You don't need to, like, have, like, this... This thing where it's like step one, once once they fill out the invoice, then QuickBooks automatically creates a, an invoice for them. Then once the invoice is paid, then another email comes out and then this happens and this happens like, okay, that's that's cool. But it's like, what happens if one of those things malfunctions? It's like, it's it's just not worth it for me to kind of have that um, when you're not getting like a million clients a week.
I, I prefer to have automations within the actual accounting software. I'm doing the actual accounting work, not when I'm onboarding the clients. Because when you onboard the clients, it's actually like the most important part. And it's not that you need to have everything perfect. You just need to show that you're there and that you're very attentive to them. That's really the, the key when it comes to onboarding. Cool. Number four, misunderstanding number four, all clients are good clients. Okay, reality, not all clients are good clients. <laughs> Yeah, not all clients are good clients for a lot of different reasons. Some it's sometimes about money, sometimes it's about like the mentality, sometimes like if they feel like they're doing you a favor, sometimes if it feels like they just don't really respect what you do, if they're super, super scattered and can't get you information. So for me personally, I don't mind a client that won't give information right away. Like when I say like won't give information, like we had this this one uh potential client, she had like four businesses and we're still following up with her right now, but she is so, she had four businesses and five kids that she's dealing in. It's like summertime. So her kids are on like summer vacation and she is just frazzled, frazzled. My partner's like, why are we even talking to this person? It's been like, it's been like three weeks. She hasn't gotten us and stuff. Like, why are we even still talking to her? Like, what does it matter? It's like, if she, if she gets it, she gets it. Not, who cares? I'm not really spending much time. I'm just sending a text message. And, you know, I can, I can see where my, where my partner is kind of like coming from but it's just like who cares it's just free money at this point you know it's like <laughs> just all you do is send a couple text messages that would she would like she'll just like call us randomly like hey i have a little bit of free time i just got this thing done can i send it to you it's like yeah send it to us and then she never sends it <laughs> and then she goes hey yeah so this is like bro what, what are you doing here but that that's that's kind of a borderline type of unideal client right for me i'm focused more on like how does the person feel in a lot of cases, you're not really going to have a client that doesn't respect you pay a high ticket price point. They might pay like $100, $200, $300 a month, but they're not going to pay you above $3,000 a month. In a lot of cases, definitely they're not going to pay you above $5,000 a month. $3,000 a month can be kind of a weird price point, though, because in some cases, like that's what they're usually like, paying like a contract, like an employee. So it just kind of depends. Right, you have to really kind of like understand, like you know, what are the ideal types of clients? How does the conversation go? Whether they see you kind of like an admin, or if they see you as like a, a partner inside the business. And then once you understand that, like after you get paid by like three or four clients, you can kind of like really understand who is a good client versus like who's a bad client. And then your job is just to stack as many good clients as possible over time. That's all you gotta do, right? And then just really like kind of work to reduce the headaches you have in your business over time. Like the reason why I like my business is because I have systematically removed all the headaches or things that I don't actually like to do. Even if like in some cases it might have made me a little bit more money, I just don't do the stuff I don't want to do. And then I enjoy the business more so I can do it longer. So even though in the short term, I might have made a little bit less money, in the long term, I make more because I can run the business longer. So I, over time, you're just going to make more money naturally the longer in something and you're doing it right. Cool. Next thing, uh, misunderstanding five, that you can do everything alone, okay? So I would always try and get support, right? Whether that's learning new skill sets, whether it's hiring subcontractors, staff, virtual assistants, and building a reliable team. So you could do a lot of this stuff alone. Like you, I, I've seen, I saw this is one guy that I saw, he, he's gone up to about, what, 25, 30 grand a month by himself. I think he's like 60-ish clients. And it's like 60 or 70 clients is doing everything on his own. It's just like, okay, that's cool. But like, what kind of life is that? You know? And he makes a great profit margin off of that. It's like super, super high. So I'm like, he, he might be spending a lot when it comes to tax. Unless he understands like tax. I don't know what his tax situation is, but it's just like, I don't really understand why you'd want to do everything on your own. You know what I mean? Like for me, I like having freedom. So even though my income is very high, I have some contracts, like, as you saw earlier in the video, like, my, my uh, staff member was, like, messaging me, the one who, like, books calls for me uh, to get consultation calls on the calendar, and she's like, hey, this is kind of happening, this is kind of happening. I, it allows me to be able to just do what I want during the day without ever having to, like, worry about, like, is my business growing? Because that was the thing that I was, like, really struggling with in the beginning. I was like, I have to work in here, I have to be doing this, I have to be doing this, I have to, I have to, I need to do this. But it's like, once you start getting the team, it's like, okay, this stuff is moving without you. When stuff moves without you, that's when you're in a great place, a super, super, super great place, because then you just don't need to do anything, right? When you take away all the stuff that you need to do, you only have the stuff that you want to do left. And that's when life gets a lot easier, because if I don't want to work this week, so for example, I have to go on a trip uh, next week, and I'm probably not going to do much work outside of like talk to the mentorship students. Um, it's on the 20th, I got to go. But yeah, it's going to be like five days, no 
no business. And that that might be a little bit challenging for me because I usually like doing a little bit of business every single day. So we're going to have to kind of see how that goes. I'll probably film some videos when I'm out there, but... Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me, man. I'm tired. It's 8.40 in the morning, man. i got to recover from the weekend. So I've been doing a lot of this uh, salsa dancing, but a lot of this stuff is like late night. So it's very, very uh, counterproductive for my sleep goals. But, you know, it's all good. It's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes in this life. Um, yeah, it just makes everything so much easier. You can scale so much further uh, without it. Okay. Right. And it depends too. Like if, if you want to be like a workaholic and work like 50, 80 hours a week, okay, cool. Then yeah, you can do everything on your own, potentially. Uh, but I just don't think that's a way to live. And I just really want to build this thing for time freedom as well as financial freedom. So doing everything myself kind of eliminate or kind of defeats the purpose of time freedom. <clears throat> okay, cool. Next thing, misunderstanding six. Okay, so fixed pricing. So a lot of people, what happens is like they might have on their website like 150 gold or it's like bronze package, 150. Next package is like 300. Package after that, it's like uh, $1,500. And it's like, or, or it says like starting at $1,500. And I'm like, that's that sounds good in theory, but it's very hard for you to get a business owner to go to the $1,500 price point and understand that it's starting at $1,500 because all they see is $1,500. So in most cases, what they're going to do is they're going to try and choose a middle pack and they go, I'm not that big of a business. It's like, well, you know, you do $5 million a year, so you, you technically should be paying like, you know, $3,000 to $5,000 a month. Well, no, but it says, 50, it says, you know, if you're doing this and you do this, I don't really necessarily need that. So I want the $600 per month pricing. It's like they kind of like try and, and, and go into the middle price point. Right, which is not bad if your middle price point is, is correct, but most of the time it's not. So you need to be able to like build packages that are very um flexible to the individual. Now, another thing when I said the fifteen hundred starting at fifteen hundred dollars, a lot of them just see fifteen hundred dollars. They have their mindset and they, they have their initial my like mental budget at fifteen hundred. So when you start saying it's more like three thousand or five thousand, like wait, but I saw fifteen hundred. So that's a mismatch of expectations, and that will drop your close rate very consistently. And that's when you get like a lot of people say, "Well, that's too expensive." Or, I wasn't expecting to pay that much. I was expecting to pay this, and then you actually end up like negotiating or haggling. That that's not good either because now you kind of went and dropped your price. So now it's just it's just not as good of a of a relationship. Next thing. I always build based on the value and the scope of work. So I use scope of work to understand exactly what it's um what the value is worth. Then I use the revenue uh, percentage of revenue to see how likely someone is to actually want to work with me. And then I'm also looking at like what are our labor costs. I'm also looking at how much time this thing takes. So there's about like seven to about eight different criteria you can use to price out your services. I like using a mixture of like seven of them, um, to really understand like how in line we are. So people ask like, well, how do you, because in our program we give like pricing capital tools, like, well, how do you know, you know, pricing, how are you so accurate with pricing, Bryce? I'm like, I'm accurate with pricing because I'm using so many different like methodologies and factors inside of it that it all kind of uh, co-aligns, co right? And when I see like it lines up like that, then it's just like, okay, well, this is the right price. <laughs> and it just makes things a lot easier for you, right? And that's how you get like value-based pricing. Misunderstanding. Okay, so, Misunderstanding seven, friends and family won't help. Okay, so this is very, very important. So when I was first getting started, I was afraid to go and talk to um, family members because I thought that they would not want to work for me. I thought they would, they would hate me forever if I, if I ever approached them to like sell them something. And I, I just had a lot of like misconceptions when I came to that. Um, yeah, just a lot of misconceptions when I came to that. So, but the funny thing is that the first like set of like clients, not my first, second, or third client, but like four or five and six were actually friends and family that I'd either seen from like, you know, either at the church or I'd seen like at dance socials and things like that. And they actually wanted to become my clients, right? So one thing about this industry, it's all about building relationships, right? Because people want to work with people they actually like, like, and they know, like, because it's all about trust. So they know you, they trust you, they're going to want to work with you that much better, that much faster, it's that much easier to get them to sign up as a client. So you just have to understand like what scripts to say and like how to do it in a way that builds a relationship even further without necessarily feeling like the only reason you're talking to them right now is just because you want to like buy something from them. So that's the key thing when it comes to that. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Next thing, no need for systems. So I like systems. I typically, I like doing people more than systems, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it's just that people can be a little bit more expensive, um, depending on what it is. Now, I I am always focused on, if I'm going to bring someone on, the revenue per person needs to go up. So if I'm going to bring on like a staff account, I need to make sure that every single staff account is like basically adding to the amount of money I can make. If not, then it's like, it's kind of a wasted, a wasted spot or a wasted employee. Same thing with like virtual assistants. Like my virtual assistants need to actually go and like bring in money. I had a, I had a one time I was paying, I paid this person like 12, it was like a virtual assistant, I was like in the Philippines. I paid her like 12 grand a year basically to do nothing. Like she would bring like no revenue into the, into the company. So it's like my profit margin just dropped by like $12,000. So it's like, I had to kind of like learn how to do that because it's like the more profit that you're getting and the more revenue you're getting per, um, higher the easier it is to grow your business so now people are not costing you money they're making you money right so in the beginning though uh more cost effective method is really understand like systems so there's like workflows inside of quickbooks there's also what's called book review which is kind of like an ai book review um inside of quickbooks and it's really pretty helpful if you understand how to use it properly um i'm really looking forward to like seeing um the the updates with like chat gpt and different things like that these different like software that can just go through and like run we have like students in our program that are like experimenting with like using chat gpt for both bookkeeping tax planning and new cleanup so it's really quite interesting to see this space like some people talk about like you know is ai gonna like replace accounts and bookkeeping it's like i don't it's it will it will make maybe like in 30 40 years okay yeah but in the meantime, if you understand how to utilize technology, it's going to just make things so much faster. Like for this YouTube channel, like I make, I, I actually consult with ChatGPT to see which videos will do the best and like how to actually structure them and think about it. So it's like me and ChatGPT work together. So I actually have it analyzed. Like basically I, I documented every single thing that I've ever like learned or spoken about. So, and also like inside of like my book, right? So I took my book, I took Book number two, I took every YouTube video, I basically had them transcribed, every like written article I ever written, I had it transcribed, I put it into this master document. And I basically say, hey, so look at all these different things that I have and that I've like thought and, and spoken about. And can you put it inside of some sort of organized fashion or outline for like a number of different videos? And then based on that, I'm going to film those videos and we're going to get to going. And it's like, okay, cool. And it just like, it makes the under like the thought process of the video so much faster. So I can like line up like 20, 30 videos very, very quickly just by doing that. So it's been very, very cool to kind of see that happening and just see that in action. So I can't imagine how much better it's going to be when I'm doing like accounting services and using that. Cool. Mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. Also, so this video's getting a little bit longer. I want to keep it under about 32 minutes uh, just because you know, I don't want to be here forever. <laughs> so if you want some help growing your business, go ahead and click the link inside the description to book a call. So I, the reason why I'm inviting you to a mentorship program is inside the mentorship program, but we're giving you proven streamlined methodologies that are customized to your individual needs. Like it's cool to watch YouTube videos like this, but it's hard for you to kind of customize it to your needs if you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what the gap is, right? So you get help and you get coaching. So I can tell you, okay, hey, you need to be doing this. I see that you try to do this, but the reason why it's not working is because of A, B, C, and D. Once you really understand how to do that and how to like do it, it makes it move so much faster. That's why the students get such consistent results because it's not that it's all about the information in a lot of cases, right? Because these YouTube videos are very, very informative. It's more about how to apply it to your specific needs. Like you can read about how to fly an airplane all day, but unless you go and you like ride in the airplane with someone that's more experienced and can teach you what the mistakes are while you're making them and before you're making them, it's good. you're not going to be able to drive the plane. Just being honest with you, right? That's why you have to go to flight school. Awesome. So if you want some help, go ahead and click the link inside the description of the above below the video. Book the call with myself. Let's see if I can help you inside of a program. And I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you on the call. Okay. Take it easy. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. I have a nose.